This week on The Anxious Truth, we're going to talk about clarifying what you want when you ask for more information about a particular topic. So let's go. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to The Anxious Truth. This is episode number 271 of the podcast. We are recording in August of 2023, in case you are listening or watching in the future. Welcome. I am Drew Linsalata, creator and host of The Anxious Truth. This is the podcast that covers all things anxiety, anxiety disorders, and anxiety recovery. So if you are new here and you just stumbled upon this YouTube channel or this podcast and you're struggling with things like recurring panic attacks or health anxiety or OCD, this is the place for you. I hope you find what we're doing here helpful or useful in some way. Of course, if you are a returning listener, welcome back as always. I'm glad that you're here. Thank you for your continued support. Today, we're going to talk about that thing, which is really common in this community where you have read books about a topic, seen social media posts about a topic, listened to four podcast episodes about a topic, seen 16 videos about a topic. And then when I say, does anybody have, have questions for me? You say, can you talk more about? Now, that's really common. You're not doing something wrong. You're not committing a crime if you ask me or people who sound like me to talk more about the topic that bothers you the most. But today we're going to talk about trying to gain a little clarity as to what exactly you're looking for when you want more information about a thing you've already gotten quite a bit of information about. So before we get into that, just a quick reminder, as always, you guys are probably tired of this pitch at this point, but I want to remind you that The Anxious Truth is more than just this video or this podcast episode on my website at theanxioustruth.com. There is a ton of other resources, ton of other content, a lot of things designed to help you out. There are books that I've written about anxiety and recovery. There are workshops and courses. There are 270 previous free podcast episodes. There are links over to the Disordered podcast that I do with Josh Fletcher. There are links to all of my other social media platforms. All the goodies are there on my website at theanxioustruth.com. So if you're new here and you, this is the first contact you've had, head on over there and check it out. Avail yourself of all the resources. I think they're helpful. People tell me that they are. So check it out. So what happens if you have a particular aspect of your anxiety that's bothering you more than any other? Maybe you have a particular symptom that you think is scariest. Maybe you have a particular thought that you cannot seem to shake that disturbs you the most. Maybe you have a particular challenge that you cannot seem to overcome because it seems to be the most difficult and scariest thing for you. And when somebody like me goes out on a social media platform and says, hey, I'm going to answer questions today, who wants to ask me questions? And you reply with, can you talk more about dot, 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 whatever your issue happens to be? What exactly are you looking for? Now, that's not accusatory. I'm not trying to tell you like, what well, don't don't say that to me. That's totally fine to ask that question. Or that's totally fine to make that request. But at some point in the recovery process, it could be really helpful if we step back from those requests and we try to gain a little clarity in terms of what we're really looking for. This is especially true. Now, if you're brand new to this, and you literally just stumbled upon this podcast, and you've never heard anything like this before, then by all means, you ask those questions because you have not heard any of this before. But if you have heard it before, and I'm going to use the example of sleep, anxiety around sleeping or not sleeping. Oh my goodness, I don't sleep enough. So I'm, I'm going to damage myself or, or I'm going to be anxious tomorrow because I'm going to be tired and I can't handle that. Anybody who has anxiety around the topic of sleep, which is many, many people in this community, as an example, will go and listen to the three, four podcast episodes that I did in the last year about sleep, including having a sleep physician on and talking to people who overcome sleep anxiety and going over all of those things. They've maybe heard all of those things, but often people will say, please talk more about sleep or please talk more about insomnia. And in that situation, you'd have to look at all of that information that's already put out there and say, okay, well, I've heard all of the psychoeducational information. I'm not going to damage myself if I don't sleep enough. I can still recover if I don't sleep enough. Being tired doesn't mean being in danger. Yes, it's really scary to allow yourself to be tired and allow yourself to not sleep. I get it. it. That's hard to confront that. Again, using sleep as an example, we can apply this to almost any particular issue in this community. But when you've heard all that and you say, can you talk more about sleep anxiety or can you talk more about insomnia? You have to ask yourself, 
well, what am I hoping to hear from Drew or whoever? If it's not me, maybe it's somebody else. I've listened to these four sleep anxiety podcast episodes on the anxious truth. And I follow you, I follow say Daniel Erickson on social media, who specializes in sleep and sleep anxiety. And I've gotten all this information, but I want more. I need more information. And in that situation, we have to really say, well, what would that what would that information tell me? There's a couple of things historically that people are looking for when they make that request. Again, I'm not picking on you if you make that request. You're not bothering me. It doesn't insult me. It doesn't annoy me. You can't annoy me. You can't bother me. You can't insult me. You can't hurt my feelings. It's totally okay. So I understand that you're just looking for some relief. But there's a couple of main categories or main themes in that relief seeking. One is, okay, I've heard now 25 times that being tired in the morning because I, I only got three hours of sleep isn't dangerous. It's uncomfortable. But the idea that this is going to damage me is not correct. And I've heard that a bunch of times. But my anxious brain is still convinced that something is missing, there must be more information than that, because it feels dangerous. It feels like it's going to make me go a little closer to losing my sanity or have a psychotic break or develop a disease. So again, using this as an example, I've heard that a bunch of times, I have been given expert information designed to educate me and assure me that my fear is not valid, it's twisted, it's magnified, it's distorted, it's not correct. It's real, it's just not correct. I'm but I want to hear it again. So sometimes can you talk more about is a request to hear it again. That's where we get into that reassurance cycle. I know I've heard you say it before. But can you say it again? Can you can you tell me again, because it still feels like this is really wrong, or this is really dangerous. That's one reason why people will ask, can you talk more about dot dot dot. Another reason people will say, can you talk more about is not reassurance seeking in a compulsive way. But there sometimes is a belief that like, okay, I've heard all this stuff. And I, I'm pretty sure that I know what I'm supposed to do now. But I can't seem to bring myself to do it, because it's really hard. And it's really scary. And I, it, it feels dangerous to, to take some action here, and allow myself to not sleep or do a driving exposure or whatever it happens to be. And I'm hoping that if you talk more about it, it'll click, and I will feel different, maybe less afraid or less threatened, or more confident. If you give me more words, I'll feel more confident. And I'll feel different. So that now I'll be more likely to, to act different to do the thing. And that's a tough place to be because if you're hoping that you're going to hear some other words that click in a way that make you feel different, so that you'll feel more capable of acting different, going toward the fear, surrendering, tolerating, floating, all of those things, doing the exposures, you can wind up frustrating, frustrated, and you can wind up in an endless, never ending search for more words, more instructions, more metaphors, more explanations, hoping that it will somehow change your internal state, so that you'll feel less afraid or more capable or more competent to go and do the scary stuff. And while it's okay to want encouragement, I'm a huge fan of that. Like I'm happy to encourage you, I'm happy to try to inspire you. I'm happy to try to empower you to take those leaps of faith to do those scary things, those difficult things. We people like me run out of words, we run out of ways to describe it that would somehow make you feel differently about doing hard things. So if you're in a situation where you want to keep asking for more information, because you're hoping that I'll say something or whoever will say something that somehow makes you feel less afraid, so that you can start to act and move toward recovery, you can wind up really frustrated. Ask for encouragement, right? Ask for cheerleading. Like, man, I've heard all of this stuff. I, I know what I have to do. It scares the hell out of me. I'm not sure I can do it. Can somebody please remind me that I'm okay, and I can do it. That's probably a more productive thing to ask for. Can somebody please remind me that I can do this? Like, 
can somebody who's done it before me remind me that they were also scared and that they got through it so that I can use that as some bit of inspiration to get me going? That's a little bit more productive than can you just talk more about? The third thing that people tend to want is more instruction. And I talked about this quite a bit. Can you talk more about often means, well, I get it. I understand the concept. I understand that I have to take an action that I'm really afraid to take. Understandably, everyone's afraid to take the actions. It's okay. If you're afraid, that's not wrong. And it seems so inconceivable to me to do this thing that I think I shouldn't do that surely you can give me more detailed step by step minute by minute instructions on how to do this really scary thing that my brain insists I should absolutely not do. And unfortunately, while that's a common thing that people ask for, and again, I cannot blame you for that. It's not a problem. None of this is an accusation or none of this is me like venting, oh, you're bothering me with those questions. Never, 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 never. But understand that if you are hoping that if I just keep talking about your scary issue, I will somehow give you steps on how to do hard things, you can also wind up frustrated. And the issue here is not with me. I mean, I'm going to keep podcasting, I keep writing books, I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing, I'm, I'm going to school to be a therapist and do all the things I'm going to keep doing these things. So it's okay for me. But for you, the danger when you want me to talk more about things, or you want whoever people like me, I'm not just saying me, you want to hear more about that topic, even though you've already heard quite a bit about it. The danger is for you, not for us. So it's not a problem for me. But I'm trying to help you avoid a problem for you, where you start to draw the conclusion, I'm never going to get this. I can't do it. I'm not going to get better. And when your brain throws those thoughts at you, what if I never recover, if you get stuck in a cycle where you're constantly always asking for more instructions or more clarification or more reassurance, that what if I never get better thought can be really powerful and can catch on a little more. Because you're stuck, you're spinning your wheels trying to learn more and read more and check out more and watch more videos. Can you do another podcast on I know I already listened to those three podcasts on emetophobia. But can you talk more about it? That can lead you into a place where you are really being critical of yourself, really judging yourself as incapable and more you're being more pessimistic about your recovery than you necessarily have to be. Everybody has those down moments. That's okay but I'm trying to help you stay out of a trap where you are stuck in a cycle of always asking, wanting more, reading more, learning more, listening to more. Sometimes it comes out as not can you talk more about but when you get in a bind, you immediately run for whatever episode of the anxious truth or disordered or whatever your anxiety toolkit that you think is going to help you and you run to it right away. That's another form of this in a way. I just don't want you to get stuck in a place where that's not really helping you. So you're not really necessarily moving forward. And then you start to judge yourself as incapable of moving forward. And that's not fair. That's kind of heartbreaking to see people get to that. So when you ask me, can you talk more about dot dot dot? That is not a problem for me. But I if you have been at this for any extended amount of time, and you find yourself continually asking me for more conversation about a topic, you have been absolutely immersed neck deep in for months, ask yourself why. And you might not just ask me to talk more about it. Another common strategy there is, well, I've heard Drew talk about it on four podcast episodes, he did two live streams on it, he posted about it a bunch of it on, on Instagram. And now I'm also going to go follow that person because they sometimes talk about it. And that person and that person and I'll listen to that podcast too. And I'll watch those videos. And I'll follow that person on TikTok because they will talk about it also. So even if Drew doesn't give me more words about it, these 16 other people might. And even though I read these three books already, I'm going to go and buy these four more books to read more about it. That is such a what's the word I'm not going to call it dangerous, but there are pitfalls there in a big way. And we've talked about this topic in, in different forms before. But today, I want to put it specifically in the, the context of the request. Can you talk more about again, just to clarify before I sort of wrap this up, because that's about all I can say about this. It's I'm just trying to 
trying to show you some red flags so you can steer clear of some some pitfalls that you don't have to and traps you don't have to step in. But when you are making those requests, why am I what am I asking for? Am I asking for instructions that are never going to come? Because if you ask me how to ride a bike, I can give you some basic instructions, but at some point you got to ride the bike. Right? If you ask me how to build a house, I can give you basic instructions on building a house. Sooner or later, you have to actually hammer those nails. So am I looking for more instructions that are probably never going to come? Am I looking for more assurance, even though I've gotten daily assurance for the last three weeks about this? Am I asking for words that will magically change how I feel about this scary, challenging thing? Or am I looking for a way to move myself beyond this stuck point without changing the way I feel so that I can move past this stuck point. But first, I think I need to change the way I feel. So ask yourself, what am I looking for? And can I really get that if Drew does another podcast episode on sleep anxiety, or if he does another podcast episode on breathing, or he does another podcast episode or a video or something on on globus sensation, difficulty swallowing? What am I what do I want? How does that help me? And am I likely to get that? That's a big one. Because that realization that like, I've been looking for these magic words now for six months, and I still haven't found them. Yet every day, I fire up my social media and I go to my 60 anxiety accounts that I follow and podcasters and YouTubers and TikTokers, and I still haven't found the magic words. Am I going to find them today? That's a really good question to ask yourself too. So when you want to ask for more, how long have I been asking for more? And am I likely to get it if I hadn't haven't got it to this point? Could it be that all of these 50 people are withholding something from me? Or there's a somehow a twist in my anxious state or in my anxiety or my fear that's so unique that all of these 50 people that I follow are missing it. So I got to keep asking them about it. You got to play the odds at some point, right? The odds that you're going to find what you're looking for start to diminish over time the more you look. So something to think about. But again, if you are new to this, and you have heard, never thought of approaching your anxiety problems this way, the way I talk about, and you cannot even imagine that how could this be true, that I have to stop trying to cope and manage it and, and stop my symptoms and treat it like a body problem. I really have to face my fear. If, if you are new to this, you ask all the questions, do not stop asking the questions, you need to ask the questions, and we need to give you the answers. It's that is the first step for everybody. If you are working with a therapist trained in treating anxiety disorders, you would start with psychoeducational content. So if you're new to this, please ask the questions. I am not telling you to stop asking your questions, you need to learn the principles. When you start to know that like, yeah, I keep hearing these same things again and again and again. Drew says it, Josh says it, Kim says it, Joanna says it, like all of these people all say it. I've heard it now 100 times. What am what else am I looking for? And am I setting myself up to be stuck in a place that I don't need to be stuck in where I'm judging myself really negatively for no good reason and not being fair to myself. So that's my 18 minutes or 19 minutes on can you talk more about dot dot dot. Sometimes on this podcast, there might be practical tips. Sometimes it's just things to think about. And I think today is just one of those things to think about. So if you have asked in the recent past couple of days, if you've asked me to talk about something else again, or any other anxiety account that you follow mental health account, if you asked again to hear the same words, what am I asking for? And am I likely to get it? Do I really need it? Or do I already have it? In the end, we all hit that point where we have to put down the book and the podcast and the video and do stuff. That is a hard, hard place to be. I didn't want to be there. Nobody wants to be there. Be nice to yourself if you're struggling in that moment, because everyone struggles in that moment. But sooner or later, we have to move from the reading, learning, talking to the doing moment. That's a hard turn to make on this path. But you can do it. Even if you have to do it a little bit at a time, that's totally okay. All right. So that's that's it. That is uh, that is the end of my ramble on like asking for yet more information on the topic you've already really heard a lot about already. 
So consider that. Think about it for a little while. Again, you're not doing anything wrong. I'm not annoyed. You're not bothering me. You're not insulting me. It's not like, oh, I can't believe that person asked me again. I get why you're asking it. It's totally okay. Just I hate to see you get stuck. So that's it. That is episode 271 of The Anxious Truth in the books. Hopefully you've something that you can take out of this today and, and use in some way in your recovery. That's my goal every week. And I will end by doing the same thing that I always do. I'll ask a couple of favors. If you're watching on YouTube, subscribe to the channel, like the video, leave a comment because I do answer all the comments on YouTube. I circle back a couple of times a week to do that. Definitely helps the channel out, helps me out. Uh, if you're listening to the podcast on Spotify or Apple Podcasts or someplace that lets you rate and review the podcast, leave a five star rating. Take a second, maybe write a review if you really dig it, because it helps more people find the podcast and then more people get help. And that's why I do this to begin with. If you want more information, which is ironic to say, given the topic of this podcast, more resources, head on over to theanxioustruth.com and check it all out. You should be listening also to Disordered, which is the podcast that I do with Josh Fletcher. That's at disordered.fm. And remember, no matter how you might be struggling today, and you feel like you are in a dark place and you are incapable of moving toward recovery, even the smallest change that moves you away from fear and toward what you want and what matters to you in life counts. They all add up, they all count. Even the littlest things matter. So do the best you can today to just take a tiny step in the right direction. I promise it will make a difference and it's better than spending another day hiding. So hang in there, I know you could do it. I will be back next week with another topic. I know what it is because we're recording out of sequence, but I will definitely see you next week. Thanks for coming and hanging out today. Hope you've been helpful. I will see you later. We're out.